Hey kids, History Channel Guy here. So most of us have heard of the story of George Washington famously turning down becoming King of America, but what if I were to tell you that there was a scheme to make a German prince the King of the United States, and it was actually supported by the former President of the Continental Congress? Well, it's true. In today's quick history episode, I'm going to tell you about the Prussian scheme. The year is 1786, and the United States is currently being ruled by the extremely ineffective Articles of Confederation. Under the Articles, each state would have their own currency. Individual states would tax each other for goods and services, meaning there was absolutely no free commerce, and the federal government had no right to tax individual states. To make matters worse, the Articles did not allow for the United States to create a standing army meaning it was up to individual states to create militia forces to handle Native Americans in uprisings. For rural states such as North Carolina and Georgia, this was extremely problematic, as in the western parts of those states, it was essentially lawlessness and vigilante justice. In fact, in some states, militias were reliant on private donors to donate army supplies to keep the peace. This was obviously a very ineffective system, and almost every educated American knew the Articles were unsustainable. One of those Americans was President of the Continental Congress, Nathaniel Gorham, who believed that the best way to gain stability within the United States was to establish a hereditary monarchy, much like that of England and other European monarchies. Coming from Massachusetts, Gorham was a strong advocate for a strong federal government. However, unlike other Federalists such as Alexander Hamilton, Gorham had a much different opinion on how to maintain a strong central government. According to Gorham, the only way to solve the issue of the Articles of Confederation would be to have a monarchy. According to Gorham, monarchies have historically led to stable governments, and it would allow the United States to act swiftly when dealing with military matters. Shays' Rebellion was an obvious reason why, as a ragtag group of rebels were able to cause havoc in the wealthy and extremely populated state of Massachusetts. Anton Shays' films mentioned this in his previous video, but imagine if there was a major slave revolt during the Articles of Confederation. You would essentially have many Haitian revolutions across the American South. So, the Articles of Confederation needed to go. But obviously you could not pick a member of the English royal family to become the new king of America. However, Gorham decided to ask a German prince if he would be interested in becoming king. Way off topic, sorry, but fun fact, King George III was actually the king of Hanover while being the king of England. Meaning, yeah, he was technically a German king. This is why the Americans fought against Hessian mercenaries during the Revolutionary War. Anyway, back to the almost king of America. So Nathaniel Gorham needed a possible candidate to become king of the United States. So he chose to offer the job to Prince Frederick Henry of Prussia. Gorham's reasoning was simple. The United States and Prussia had a very good relationship, especially since Henry's older brother, Frederick the Great, yeah, that Frederick the Great, hated the British because they abandoned Prussia during the Seven Years' War or the French and Indian War if you're a freedom-loving patriot like myself. Gorham believed that Prussia would be an excellent ally for the United States, and considering ethnically Germans made up a large portion of the United States population, it seemed like a natural match. So why didn't Prince Henry become the king of the United States? Well, like most secrets during the 18th century, the jury's still out historically. Some historians support the theory that Nathaniel Gorham offered Prince Henry the job, but he was just simply not interested, because he did not believe Americans would ever accept him as their king. Others believe that it was never offered because there was growing resentment in the United States about having a monarch. For instance, after the Philadelphia Con Convention, there was a rumor circulating that a committee was made to offer Prince Frederick, who was literally the second son of King George III, to become the king of the United States. Locals were getting so upset about the rumor that 
the convention had to publicly deny the claims that this was ever discussed, but it probably was. Moreover, they also had to say that the United States would never accept a monarchy. In fact, some historians have claimed that natural-born citizenship was included in the Constitution to end rumors of ever allowing European monarchs to become the leader of the United States. Anyway, I'm in the camp that Gorham was unable to accomplish a monarchy just because of how unpopular bringing a monarch would be. But still, the jury's still out. Despite Gorham's insistence that the Prussian scheme was fake, the story has been confirmed by Andrew Jackson and James Madison. Though someone did mention that the Philadelphia Convention also considered an unnamed French prince, I do believe Henry was the main candidate who was considered. But a French prince would make sense because France literally won the country for us, basically. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, what do you think? What would America be like if we adopted a monarchy? Would we have thrived as a country, or would we be doomed to another revolution, like how the French Revolution got rid of King Louis? Anyway, remember to like and subscribe for more quick history content. Thanks, guys.